On central banking, I just want to cut to the chase. How's Lagarde doing? Um, look, thanks for having me, Tom. Uh, I think uh, the, at the moment the policy is continuing very much in the old vein, so I think it's sort of business as usual. Uh, I think we're all fascinated to see what will come out of this strategic review. We know it's going to be more green. We know it's going to be more digital. But what we don't yet know is what's going to happen to interest rates. And I think the challenge for me is going ever more negative here is likely to do more harm than good. And I think I was very struck that the president recently said in her speech that she recognized herself the risk of going mm -hmm. more negative would start to damage the economy. So I think that, you know, the market is worried about the impact of negative rates. But on the other hand, you know, the market's penciling in negative rates till Q4 2029. We've got a decade of this stuff. Right. Um, and look, we've already been talking about negative rates since 2016. I, I have to say, I'm sorry, Tom, it's another decade for, the, for us. You, you know, with this changing of the guard at UBS, I know it's inappropriate of you to speak of executive actions at UBS and, frankly, at other banks as well. But I want to talk to you, and this, you know, we've talked to Davos about this many times. I want to talk to you about the level of impatience across continental banking, not to be more American-like, but to get it going on profit. Is that in unthinkable given the negative interest rate structure? Look, I think it's a great question. Look, if I just put UBS to one side, I mean, obviously, we had our results Please. yesterday. Profits were the Q, the third quarter profits were the best for a decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Profits yeah. You up 40%. Like, come on, you sound blah, like blah, blah, blah. Sergio. Six yeah. speaks speak for itself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you, you, you had him on, so he can say that. But I think, you know, but if you look at the Euro obviously Switzerland and the U.S. allowing banks to pay dividends that Europe's not. And I think that what I sense is there's a growing pivot amongst policymakers who are worried about uh, the, the low equity prices. The implied cost of equity for the Eurozone banking system is about 15 percent. There are very few loans in this current environment which are going to make you 15 percent. And so I sense the policymakers are getting more anxious about who is going to fund the recovery as the government support for, you know, guaranteed loans expires. And I think it leaves you look at the European banks. The negative rate environment is tough. Uh, the buildup of deposits uh, over loans is really tough. Um, and the lack of scale. Now, look, I, I think that, you know, one thing I feel strongly is the pandemic is accelerating the winner takes most characteristic. Now, it's not just the U.S. firms. I mean, look, UBS, we've got 3.8 3 trillion of client assets uh, across asset and wealth management. So, again, put UBS to one side. But the challenge for some European banks is if there is this winner-takes-most dynamic accelerating into uh, a, a digital acceleration, how will they respond? And I think that really is a, t a question you should be asking every CEO on your show.